This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. As we look back at a major milestone in the fight to abolish the death penalty in the United States, 10 years ago today, September 21, 2011, when the state of Georgia executed Troy Anthony Davis for a crime many say he did not commit, he was put to death despite major doubts about evidence used to convict him of killing police officer Mark McPhail, including the recantation of seven of the nine non-police witnesses at his trial. They say they were threatened. As the world watched to see whether Troy Davis's final appeal for a stay of execution would be granted by the U.S. Supreme Court, Democracy Now! was the only news outlet to continuously broadcast live from the prison grounds in Jackson, Georgia. During our six-hour special report, we spoke with Troy's supporters, family members who held an all-day vigil, then heard from those who witnessed his death by lethal injection shortly before midnight. Soon we'll be joined by two of the people who were with us that night. But first, we revisit that day, a decade ago, starting with someone who cannot be with us, Troy's oldest sister, Martina Davis Correa, his most vocal and steadfast advocate, who endured a decade-long battle with breast cancer and died at the age of 44, a few weeks after this. Martina speaking hours before her brother was executed, when she rose to stand from her wheelchair. So I want to stand with my family and say that my, our lives and, and my sons and my sisters and brothers' lives and my nieces' lives has been richer for knowing Troy. Anybody who's met Troy has come away with an imprint of him on their soul. I don't have to tell people what my brother's like, because once they get to meet him, they can see for themselves. And that's why they try to keep him voiceless in the press, because they don't want you to know who Troy Davis is, because then you couldn't stand by and allow the state to kill in your name. So I just would like to say that I am Troy Davis. Tina Correa, standing up in her wheelchair, the older sister of Troy Davis, his most steadfast advocate, speaking 10 years ago today. She would die a few months later of cancer. As the scheduled time of Troy Davis's execution approached, hundreds of his supporters rallied outside the prison in Jackson, Georgia. Around 7 p.m. Eastern time, the crowd erupted into thunderous cheers. For just a moment, it appeared the Supreme Court had stayed the execution like it had three times before. What did Troy tell you the last time you saw him? The last time he's, it's part of the reasons. We're hearing some kind of cheer that has gone up. Stay! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh But the jubilation was short-lived. That was Ben Jealous, who will be joining us in a minute. After realizing the execution had just been delayed, not stayed, supporters of Troy Davis waited for news from the Supreme Court. At about a quarter to 11 p.m., the crowd went silent when it was learned the high court would not stop the execution. Prison officials began the lethal injection process minutes later, at about 10.53 p.m. Troy was pronounced dead shortly thereafter at 11.08 p.m. 
The court ordered execution of Troy Anthony Davis has been carried out. The time of death is 11.08 p.m. Again, prison official uh, sharing the news that Troy Anthony Davis was executed at 11.08. That was the time of death. I'm standing with Wesley Boyd. And I like to say there's been a travesty of justice, and I like to tell America ought to be ashamed of itself, and God help America. And if you're alive with America, please don't come to Georgia. Don't come to Georgia. Don't buy any Georgia pecans. Don't buy any Georgia peaches. Don't buy any trade with Georgia, the whole world. Don't buy anything with Georgia. God bless America, and God bless Troy Davis. Minutes after the state of Georgia executed Troy Davis, a group of reporters who witnessed the execution walked out of the death chamber and onto the prison grounds. They described Troy Davis's final moments. This is John Lewis, a radio journalist at, WAS, at WSB. Basically, it went very quietly. The McPhail family and friends sat in the first row. Warden read the order, asked if Troy Davis had anything to say, and Davis lifted his head up looked at that first row and made a statement in which he said he wanted to talk to the McPhail family and said that despite the situation you're in, he was not the one who did it. He said that he was not personally responsible for what happened that night, that he did not have a gun. He said to the family that he was sorry for their loss, but also said that he did not take their son, father, brother. He said to them to dig deeper into this case, to find out the truth. He asked his family and his family and friends to keep praying, to keep working and keep the faith. And then he said to the prison staff, the ones he said who are going to take my life, he said to them, may God have mercy on your souls. And his last words were to them, may God bless your souls. Then he put his head back down. The procedure began and about 15 minutes later it was over. As Troy Davis's death was announced, I turned to Ben Jealous, who was standing with the family of Troy Davis in the protests. Ben was then the president of the NAACP. You know, my heart goes out and goes out to the McPhail family. We're surrounded by the Davis family. All of our hearts are broken. I've known his nephew since his nephew was three years old. But right now, it goes out to the guards. You know, there was a moment the other day when my staff was in there and the family was in there, and the guard leaned over to Martina and asked her to hold it together because he said, we're just barely holding it together. He said, my mom's been, been praying for you guys for days. And there was a sense that if she started crying, the guards would start crying. And we have to remember that you know, these are men, these are working class men and women, you know, in a rural area looking for a good paying job to support their family. And this shouldn't be part of it. And they know they may have to execute somebody, but having to execute somebody that misses so much doubt. When the former warden used to be the boss here saying, stay the execution. The former head of the FBI saying, stay the execution. Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, liberals, all saying, stay the execution. It's absolutely inhumane. It's not just a crime against Troy Davis. It's a crime against our democracy. It's a crime against those specific men and women who are called to hold down his left leg or his right leg amid so much doubt when even their old boss is saying, stop this, don't do it. And Ben Jealous will join us in just one moment. Just some of the voices from Democracy Now! special broadcast, September 21st, 2011, 10 years ago today, when Troy Anthony Davis was executed by the state of Georgia. When we come back, we'll speak with two people who were there that night and who continue to fight to abolish the death penalty, in addition to Ben Jealous, Troy's sister, Kimberly Davis. Stay with us. <laughs> 